Hey guys! What we're going to do is take a look at ionic bonds and actually how they form new compounds after a chemical reaction occurs. So we're going to start having the beginning of a reaction and we're going to actually be predicting the ending. So here's the next step. We know the five types of chemical reactions along with how we crisscross our oxidation numbers to get the subscripts of the new chemical compounds. We're now going to use these two things together to help us predict the ending of a chemical reaction. So here are some reminders. Cations will never pair with another cation. Metals always want to kick out their electrons, so they will not pair together. The positive oxidation numbers will not bond together. Anions may bond together. They may share their electrons with another anion to create a covalent bond. So if we pair up a cation with a new anion and we have two anions left over, they are allowed to bond. So the steps of predicting a product. Determine the type of chemical reaction that we are looking at. This will give us a hint as to what the product looks like. So looking at this chemical formula, we have HCl, this is hydrogen and chlorine bonded together, and zinc all by himself. Now zinc is actually a transition metal, so we're going to kind of cheat a little bit here in the next step. But notice we have a compound and a single element. That means that this is a single replacement reaction, so zinc is actually going to swoop in and pair up with chlorine instead of having hydrogen there. So right underneath, just to help us out, I'm going to write single replacement to remind us. Next, we have to identify what are the cations and what are the anions, and what are their oxidation numbers. So hydrogen is actually a cation because he has a plus one charge, even though he is a nonmetal. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, so he has a minus one charge. Zinc and all transition metals, if I do not give you a hint, assume that their charge is plus two. Now later on we will talk about what the, those hints are and how to determine it if their oxidation number is different, but for now just a plus two. So I've identified it's a single replacement reaction. Zinc is going to come in and swoop and steal chlorine. Hydrogen has a plus one, chlorine has a minus one, and zinc has a plus two. Now we have to switch the anions to create the new compounds. Write the new pairs with their original oxidation numbers. So on the left we had H with a plus one, Cl with a minus one, and zinc with a plus two. So after the arrow, I'm switching the anion, so zinc's going to get chlorine. So we have H with a plus one plus Zn with a plus two and Cl with a minus one. Now that we've switched them, we have to crisscross our oxidation numbers. So hydrogen for now, I'm just going to leave all by himself. When we crisscross these down, this two with zinc goes outside to where chlorine is and the one with chlorine goes to zinc, so we have ZnCl2. Now since hydrogen is a non-metal, he will bond to another hydrogen to become a stable. So any non-metal that is left lonely, you can put a two down low. So now we have HCl plus zinc yields H2 plus zinc chloride, or ZnCl2. The last step is balancing our chemical formula. So I'm going to rewrite the ending from the last slide, and I'm going to drop down my H, my Cl, and my zinc. I have one, one, and one, two, two, and one, so I have to put a two in front of HCl to make those balance. Okay, so this was a pretty easy example. I'm actually going to do a second video that has just straight predicting products examples so we can see a couple more difficult ones a little bit more in depth. So remember, we have a couple hints. If an anion or a nonmetal is left alone after the arrow, always add a subscript 2 to its chemical symbol because they will always bond to another atom to create a molecule. If a cation or a metal is left alone after the arrow, do not add a subscript to. They will not bond to another atom because they want to kick their electrons out. They are not willing to share. Okay, one more example. I'm going to do all the steps right on this slide. So PbSO4 plus AgNO3. 
This is a double replacement reaction since there are two complete compounds. So right above the arrow, I'm going to put DR for double replacement. Second step, write them with their oxidation numbers. Now, since there are no numbers down low next to PV and SO4, I know that their oxidation numbers have to be the same. So SO4 has an oxidation number of minus 2. That means PB must have an oxidation number of positive 2. AG and NO3 have no down low numbers, so their numbers must be the same. And NO3, according to our cheat sheet, has an oxidation number of minus 1, so AG must have an oxidation number of plus 1. So that's step 2, and that is our hint of reminding us what the oxidation numbers are of transition metals if it isn't specifically given to us. Check the oxidation number of the nonmetal. If there's nothing there, that means they have to be the same. So check the oxidation number of the nonmetal and give it to both of them. Now we're going to take the endings and switch the endings. So after the arrow, I'm going to write PB with a plus 2, NO3 with a minus 1, plus AG with a plus 1, and SO4 with a minus 2. Now crisscross your oxidation numbers down. And I'm going to rewrite the whole thing. PB, SO4, plus AG, NO3 yields PB, NO3, 2, because I crisscrossed that 2 down, plus AG, 2, SO4, because I crisscrossed this one down. Now just balance. In order to balance, I want PB, SO4, because it stays together, AG, and NO3, because it stays together. And I have 1, 1, 1, and 1. 1, 2, 2, 1. So AG and NO3 need another molecule on this side, so I'm going to put a 2 out front in order to balance these two. So that's our final reaction. Lead sulfate plus silver nitrate yields lead nitrate. Lead nitrate plus silver sulfate. And it's already balanced and ready to go. So again, I'm going to show you a second video with just examples, and then in class we're going to practice a lot with this. See you then!